Are you looking for a life of freedom and flexibility? Do you want to have as much success with your family as you do in business? Here in the Entrepreneurial Family Man podcast, we break down the barriers and bust the myths that are keeping you from living your best life at home and at work. You deserve a thriving family, rich faith, and business success. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Family Man podcast. We are back with another episode of the Entrepreneurial Family Man. Thank you for joining us. And today we want to talk about what kind of marriage do you want? What kind of relationship do you want with your spouse? And how are you being intentional with that now? Maybe you're, maybe you're like some of us too, you know, hey, we had awesome dating relationships and then boom, we had got married and started having kids and it's easy to drift, guys, but you've got to rekindle the romance. You got to invest in this most important relationship in your life. And so today we just want to talk about, hey, what can we do to, to build discipline in our marriage, to build these regular times where we get to date and, and do it well. And so, Jamie, Michael, why do we even talk about this? Why, do, why is it such an important topic for an entrepreneurial family man? Oh, I don't know. Maybe this is the most important person in your entire life. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to pay some attention to this relationship? Absolutely. So what's this all for, really? Let's, let's be practical here for a second. What, why invest in your marriage? Why are you trying to make so much money? Why are you trying to create flexibility and freedom in your life? So that what? Well, guess who you're going to be doing this with? <laughs> your wife. Like you're walking side by side with your wife and you're going to ignore that so you can go over and do something else? Hmm. Yeah, this is... To redirect and focus in on the most important human relationship you have on earth. Yeah, and we are all working from home, uh, homeschooling, traveling. These are our most important people and our wives are doing it all with us. And so it's almost like the COO and the CEO having an amazing relationship, right? Um, who wants to vest, invest in a company where the CEO hates the CFO or take you know, whatever chief operating person you want to consider? So by the way, this might be the only company that we can talk about where the CEO and the CFO get to sleep together. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. This we is actually, a pleasure, baby. We yeah. actually encourage this. In our... <laughs> yes, no, no. exactly. Yeah. So what's the point of pursuing success if at the end you are living with a stranger or living with someone who you haven't invested in that relationship at all? I love the picture of a mutual fund. If you're a guy, you're, you probably can see through the lens of building wealth over time by investing in a mutual fund. Well, guess what? Your marriage is not a lottery ticket. So don't think that because you got married, you won the lottery and you can just live off the spoils for the rest of your life, right? Absolutely yeah. not. You want to end up with a wealthy relationship in your marriage? There needs to be investments along the way consistently. So you build that, the wealth of your relationship with your wife. Yes. I want my marriage to look like the Amazon stock in the last couple of years. It's gone up like 30 times. It's way better than a mutual fund, Michael. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> How many times do you hear that yeah. though? Man, I wish if I knew this when I was 20, if I would have put a little bit away, I'd be a millionaire right now. Yeah. And we can, we can do it in our marriage. And yes. I think a lot of, a lot of guys, I'm not going to name names here. But Chris, don't look at me like that, buddy. But we sort of think that our marriage is different than anything else. So we know what it's like to invest in our business or invest in whatever it is. But remember how you felt when you were dating your wife, like, especially on that second date where you were nervous, like, what if she's not happy with the way it goes or if I say the wrong thing? And then somehow we think the actual race is to put a ring on the girl and lock it down. But we all know that that is not what happens. That's just the beginning of a, a long marathon. 
Yeah. And that's, that's why I like, I like that analogy a lot, Michael, of lottery ticket versus like regular dollar cost averaging into your index fund, right? I mean, that's what it's about. I mean, Jamie, you just said this isn't just a race to get a ring on, but this is a long term. I mean, we want to be living and growing old with our spouses. And if we're doing that, but we decided to not invest those first few decades, that's going to be a pretty miserable retirement if there you are with a kind of a stranger or someone that you, you know, resent. So it's this regular communication contribution to your marriage. And, and literally, I mean, just like, you know, we hear, Hey, if you got these index funds, you should be depositing once a month or a couple times a month, guys, you should be doing the same thing in your marriage and these dates weekly, right? I mean, Jamie, Michael, you guys, you both, you both do that. Absolutely. And this is not just about making our relationship better. It's about making our family better. Um, I think about my four kids and what I want for them. It's going to bring so much happiness to my heart to see my kids having amazing relationships with their spouses. That is what I want. And that'll happen if we consistently go on dates with our wife. I, I know before this call, we were talking a little bit about this conversation and we were talking about our kids will actually like watch us pull out of the driveway with our wife. We open the door and I, that's so cool, right? They're kind of like, Ooh, mommy and daddy are kind of like boyfriends and girlfriends. Like when they first met and like, that is what we want for our kids. And it won't happen if they don't have examples to follow. So, I mean, that's a huge why. And obviously it should be more important to just please our spouse. But if you're at a spot, I know some of you, some of the people listening are in a spot that that's a little bit hard. Think of your children. It's like, it doesn't just have to be for your, for your spouse and to create that romance and everything else. It can be for that legacy that you want more than anything else. No doubt, Jamie, this is so much bigger than just us and us having a life that we want, right? There's a human being on the other side of this, our wives, they have their own set of dreams, things that they long for. And guess what? You are putting on a school you're putting on a clinic on how both you should be treated as a wife or as a husband and how you should treat a wife or a husband. Yes. And your kids are watching that. I mean, even at an early age. In fact, Michael, I bet Gunner's already observing how you get dressed for a date, how you yes. prepare to take mommy out, right? I mean, our, our kids, they know those things. In fact, yeah, most of the time when we take our dates, right, it, it, we come back late, the kids are already in bed, but the next morning they're like, mommy, daddy, what did you guys get to do last night? You know, and where'd you go? And I mean, they're just excited to kind of get a little glimpse into what that's like. And you guys both said it's so powerful to leave this legacy, but to lead with this, this legacy because we're leading by example and our kids are seeing this. Yeah. Yes. Super cute. Gunner gets <laughs> jealous sometimes when I'm affectionate <laughs> with my wife. And uh, other times he just kind of, he likes it. He pretends not to like it, but he kind of wants to get in on the hug. Like if I'm giving my wife a hug. Yeah, right. He's peeking through his hands and wanting to see, okay, how, how should I interact with a woman someday? Like he might not have the language around that, but those are some mm. questions he's asking for sure. It, my, my heart throb is Giovanni. And he's always getting romantic with Ruthie. And he actually asked me a couple of months ago that, Poppy, if you die, can I marry mommy? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> uh, a whole lot of respect right there. Uh, you know, I've heard it said that when somebody asks you a ridiculous question, you give a ridiculous answer. So I was like, sure, why not, buddy? <laughs> but hey, do you guys, do you, do, Chris and, and Michael, do you remember those first dates with, with Lydia and Alicia, what you were thinking and how after you moved into being really serious, all these hopes and dreams about your life together, it was the dating. It was like that context of a romantic dinner or a walk on the beach or something that was magical where all these dreams, hopes and dreams opened up about all the things that we would do together as a family, as a couple. And to me, that is another big why. 
our families, especially in this podcast and what we're talking about, is we want to blur the lines of business and family and parenting and all those other things and just kind of blow up this whole, the way, Chris, you said silos, right? Where everything's compartmentalized. If we date our spouses and create that environment again, that is where hopes get birthed. Yes, that's so true. And I, you know, a perspective I have too, I mean, again, we're all three at home entrepreneurs. Our wives are also homeschooling. So let's be frank here. We're around each other a ton, right? So sometimes people are like, well, why do you even need to date? You see each other all the time. Guess what? The routine of life can be just sort of mundane sometimes. You need to add that spice, add that excitement. Oh, this Thursday, we've got a date. We're going to go out. We're going to get dressed up. We're going to be different and we're going to talk differently. And we're going to vision cast and share more what's on our heart, right? Those are the times to really invest in because sometimes, yeah, the, the routine of life can maybe just drag, drag that down. So you got to really invest in those key times. Yeah. But you might be saying right now, well, it's just different now. We just don't feel the same way. Yeah. We love each other and we're committed to each other, but like the, the same, the feelings are just a little bit different. (laughs) Guess what? The feelings come when you start to do these things to invest in your marriage. You have to Mm -hmm. build those and lead those as a man and really be intentional about taking ownership over that and making sure you're investing at a very practical level. What could that look like, right? Actually hiring a babysitter. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Paying a babysitter to come over so you can leave your house. Wait. Go out and do something you love together. That's Wait, not expensive. But, but you could you could just, you know, put the kids down to bed and have a bonfire in the backyard and not spend any money. Wouldn't that be you could do that all the time and it'd be so much easier, Michael? Yeah, maybe if you were dating a guy. <laughs> right they'll be like, yeah, the cool, kids are like awesome. my buddies the kids are, just, are like banging on the windows with like flashlights to see what you and your wife are doing and <laughs> you're like leaning over to give a kiss and all of a sudden like the kids start screaming yeah. we've all heard <laughs> yeah. the, the analogy right of uh, the crock pot versus the microwave guys can flip that switch on and off be right into the romance and then right out and we're good women like they have a very long warming up process and so that might, their first thought of romance might start when they wake up that morning before the, the date even is on their mind. And then it, maybe it's a little touch where you leave a note sometime during the day. Maybe it's a little kind of flirting that happens later in the day. These, these uh, very mysterious creatures are way <laughs> different than us. And so we yes. have to pull them, we have to lead them out of that environment so we can foster that and allow space for them to, to develop this at their own pace. Michael, yeah, you are a romantic so guy. I'm like, I believe it. Do you read <laughs> Lydia poetry on your dates a lot? If I knew some, I would. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in Groundhog's Day where he starts doing the French poetry thing. She's like, you speak French? And he's like, we. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> so this is good, though. Let's talk about this, right? The how. We, we kind of address the why. Talk about the how. I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you guys do when, when you get ready for a day? I mean, Michael, you just actually dropped some total wisdom bombs. I'm like taking notes over here. I know. But, I got Like, seriously, the whole... Yeah, my... my my pen just ran out of ink, actually. Which is my <laughs> <laughs> but you, seriously, the whole crock pot analogy is a good one. We we're going to bring this up. But I mean, that morning, right? You, you start doing some things. You start, hey, hang, yeah. the dress up, hang the dress up that you want her to wear that, you know, that night. Or so, you know, what do you guys yeah. do? So uh, Andy Anders is a huge fan of mine. Oh, sorry, Marco. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no, I'm a big fan of Andy Anders. And he talks about like for birthday gifts and and Christmas gifts for your family to create anticipation. And so I've sort of learned this from him, but it's like when we have a date scheduled on Thursday, I'll like mention it to Ruthie and be like, oh, I can't wait until, until Thursday. Or it's like days before you kind of build up the anticipation. That's a little bit of your crock pot. That's like plugging the crock pot in right there. Yeah, it's, Exactly, it's, yeah. right? It's like it it's won't true. work if it's not plugged in, so give me some credit. And hey, that's just a practical example. Schedule stuff. If you got to work on a, doing a babysitter or all stuff, you, you do. You just have to schedule. These are like, what do they call it? Scheduled spontaneity. But it's like, yes. you schedule this 
days in advance so that you're not like scrambling for a babysitter on some morning when you know you need a date because things are getting out of control. Yeah. Here, in advance. here in the Nashville area, I don't know if, if this is just a market thing here in Nashville, but we actually have these drop-in daycares and my kids beg to go to them. And so we know the owner and it's awesome. Like you just go there and the kids just like check themselves in. They take off their shoes and put them in a bucket and then we can pay by the hour. It's actually pretty affordable, but our kids like love when we go on dates because we do that. But when, before that, when we were living in Buffalo, we had being there for just years and years, we had a list as long as our arm of babysitters. And that was one thing that we didn't have when we moved here. So, um, but we're working on that list. So I would say, again, like I'm like the guy who is really bad with systems and processes, but I see the value in them. It's like you need that list of people that you can call to be babysitter because, you know, for us, me and Ruthie, we get like invited to some r- really cool things and we're looking for a babysitter all over the place. If that dr- drop in daycare place isn't open. So I would, I would just encourage everybody to try to find, build that list of people that you can call and count on to babysit for you. Yeah. You guys have a list. Great wisdom. I, I try to have a basketball team ready because I know there's going to be conflicts and I don't want to be in a pinch where I want to do something really special with my wife and then nobody's available. I mean, that would oh. be a tragedy, right? Yeah. That happened actually here. We got invited to that, um, the thing at the country club, Chris, the Ziegler event. Oh yeah. And I remember that. We, we had a babysitter lined up, but our kids got the flu and Ruthie ended up staying here. I felt so bad. Yeah. You probably oh. had an awesome date the next night though, just to try to recoup some of that lost investment. Oh man, we doubled up. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another, uh, I know this is a little bit of a tangent, but take care of your babysitter too, right? Like you can't try to pinch pennies and say, well, how many hours did you work? Like, I want to make sure you're not making more than minimum wage. Like be generous, maybe even leave a snack for them or some dinner. If they didn't eat dinner, take care of them. They are an asset, a key asset right. to the relationship. And I'll give a little tip here that's worked for me. But when me and Ruthie have a babysitter at our house and we go to a nice restaurant, what we'll do is order a dessert to go and bring it to the babysitter. Mm. Ooh, that's, that's good. Awesome. Ooh, I got to write that note balls. down too. <laughs> Too bad you don't have any ink left from Michael's wisdom bomb. So. <laughs> I got, I got another pen. I'm good. I'm good. There's another point I just want to mention here too. Um, what does it communicate to your wife when you don't schedule time with her? Hmm. It says you're not a priority. It says it's you. This isn't important enough for me to make this the number one thing in my life. Well, if you're saying right now, if you're listening right now and you're saying, well, I'm so busy, like I'm overwhelmed with work, the kids, all this stuff is piling up. Like, I just don't have time. When you say I don't have time to do this, what you're saying is your relationship is not important enough. I want you to hear that. That's that's some hard truth. Ooh. I know I dished out something to you, but hear that. That's we what just, your wife is hearing too. That's, that's right a- between the eyes, but needed needed wisdom. Yeah. Um, I'll share this. I'll be a little vulnerable with you guys because no one else is listening, right? Just the three of us. (laughs) It's just us, Jamie. When, when I made the commitment to start dating Ruth, I remember so many things weren't right in our lives that I wasn't where I wanted to be career wise. Um, I didn't really unpack this at the time, but thinking back, I was a little bit afraid of like putting myself in that context of having those deep conversations because I didn't like what was going on in my life. And so I think if you're opening up a can of worms, but if you're dating, if you're going to start to date your wife and you haven't been, but it's a good can to open. And, um, we've talked about the before on podcast, right? We were joking around about, open. okay, don't go there, but come on. Like, number three. Yeah. But like, we talked about this too. This is, you being a real man to man up and have a great relationship. And Chris, you got to jump in here. What are you going to say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Like we want to be yes. examples to our kids. Like we all have boys. We want to be real men and our relationship with our spouse is so important. And so we're going to have to talk about our hopes and dreams, our fears and our passions with our number one person because we're doing life together and that can be painful sometimes. 
Yeah, no, I was, I was just going to riff off of your <laughs> vulnerability and, and share mine because that's exactly where we were when we, when we were in this, this funk of, of our marriage, you know, several years back, which was all a result of my selfishness and just career mm-hmm. first, you know, mentality. I mean, it was, it was a little bit kind of scary to say, okay, I, I'm going to actually start carving out these date nights and make an intentional time and really kind of, I mean, truly rekindling that relationship. And yeah, I think we had to kind of get through that, those awkward first times of like sitting down over a long date and like talking deeply about, again, the things that we started talking about when we were dating, right? The, the dream casting, what do you, what do you envision marriage looking like? You know, what do you envision, what are your goals and dreams and having to do that again? But now like that's, that's, some of the best conversation we look forward to in our date nights is, yeah, you touch base on, Hey, how, how are how things been and unpack some of that. But then you're like, where are we moving forward? And you have that, that windshield time, right. To, to really look forward. Yeah. I remember four years ago when we were, it was four years ago, we moved to Nashville and about a year before that we were going to this one restaurant on, on main street in Williamsville, New York. We were planning on moving from Nashville, from Buffalo to Nashville and I remember all these amazing nights that me and Ruthie went to this restaurant and we just dreamed of the life we wanted to live and the way we wanted to grow our business and the things we wanted to do with our family. And I think there's probably some people listening that they have some really big dreams and you need, we need, our, we all need our wives to be, to help us to do the things that we want to do in the future. And that context is just an amazing place to really put some legs on those dreams. Yeah, no kidding. So what does your wife long for? What movies inspire her deeply? Do you know that about her? These are some questions that you can start to ask when you're sitting across from your wife at a really nice dinner and the lighting is a little bit lower. What do you hope for? What do you long for in life? What are your dreams? These are might be tough questions to sit with because what if you can't provide those things for her or what if that's impossible? Well, that might be true, but you're sure as heck not going to get any closer if you don't ask those questions and you don't know those things. So open it up, open up, allow her to open up her world to you and entrust you with her hopes and her dreams You might not get there tomorrow, but you can start taking steps when these conversations continue regularly. And they don't typically happen when you have a diaper in one hand and a sippy cup in the other hand and um, you're scrambling around the house just trying to get through life. So this is absolutely key that you get some time away, away from the noise, away from the chaos to have these intentional conversations. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, that is so true in any relationship is to have those kind of key, key moments where you're doing the hoping and the vision casting and the the great heart to heart, right? Because like you said, Michael, we're we're both in the thick of this <laughs> diaper and naps and swats and all that good stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's like you're not having some great deep conversations during the day. <laughs> I'm done with the diapers, thank the Lord. Uh, yeah, well, a couple more years. Years, you'll Jamie, be. I, Jamie, I'm glad you're out of diapers. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, man, I totally. So, all right, so yeah, you, it you all depends blood. on. Oh, never mind. Oh, it depends. Go on. <laughs> we add, added some effects here. So, guys, what if what if you can't afford this though? I mean, what if you can't afford to go on a, 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 a nice date? What do you do? Yeah, maybe maybe you can't afford to stay married then. Ooh. Ooh, what's it worth? What's the price you're going to pay? You can't afford not to, right? You can afford to keep the lights on. I think this is what I think. It's like we afford the things that we put value on, right? And so it's like I tell myself, oh, I can't afford to do that. But then I spend something, some money on something that other, everybody thinks is ridiculous, but I value. Yeah. Like I can't afford to do that, but I can buy a $2,000 guitar or something. Like, yeah. It's like we should value our wives more than a $2,000 guitar, right? Yeah. What if your greatest hero in life happened to be in town and connected with you and said, Hey, I'd love to spend some time with you. Would you uh, just try to sneak in a quick little date and save money? Or would you 
pull out all the stops just to try to impress that person, just to try to um, make a good impression and, and to value that time. Your wife is more important than that person. That's good, that Michael. Is, that is really good. She is your hero. That's so true. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, have, to, you have to pull out all the stops. I mean, come on. Who, who was it that said, like, they will, you will know someone's priorities by looking at their bank account? And so if you have these random bills or your $700 car payment and whatever, and you can't afford to, like, take your wife out on a few dates a month, you gotta need. You have a misalignment of priorities. Yes. Right? So, then you could buy a junker and afford to take a really fancy Uber on a date. <laughs> Once a month, Save Uber XL, baby. <laughs> right. Do some like luxury action, depending on where you're at. We got like Uber luxury here in Nashville. So, yeah. So get ready your seven hundred dollar payment and go do something fun with your wife, like you did when you were first engaged. Jamie, what was your idea? Let's say that that budget is tight. You mentioned something earlier about what to do. Um, yeah, and you know what? I'll tell you, this is an awesome idea, even if your budget isn't tight, because it's just a lot of fun. It makes it kind of whimsical. But me and Ruthie, we haven't done this in a while, and I think I'm going to do this. So you guys follow up with me and make sure. I hope Ruthie doesn't listen to this podcast until I actually do this. But um, So what we used to do is get a babysitter, come to the house, and then the kids would be like already almost in bed when we, when by the time the babysitter got here and then we would leave the house and go to a really nice restaurant and maybe order an appetizer like crab cakes or something like that. Uh, maybe get a bottle of wine or a glass of wine, some kind of cocktail or something and then have dessert or maybe not even do dessert. But we'd, we would have like dinner at a normal time, maybe five or 6 PM. And then we'd go out at seven thirty or eight. And then what was awesome is just very romantic and nice. And then we'd come home and the house would be totally quiet. and The kids would be up. And then that's like a time when we can just sit down and kind of unwind and acclimate before we go to bed. And that's just so much fun to do. Um, I think the opposite of that is when you come home from a date and there's all this romance. And then like there's like four kids like screaming at the top of their lungs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that will kill romance with a machete, right? <laughs> <laughs> so bad, very violent <laughs> well bedtime is not a good um prophylactic right <laughs> <laughs> the bedtime routine with like four kids and oh man kids. that's that's a whole another episode it's like jim gaffigan's like it's like what is that what does he say that's re, it's a reverse hostage situation like oh. just stay in your room please i'll give you what you want <laughs> right you guys ever like paid your kids to go to bed <laughs> like here's like 50 bucks if you like we don't hear from you the rest of the night <laughs> okay that's not a good idea bribery of perhaps my son right. doesn't value money yet but right yeah. you can't negotiate with terrorists right <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's against the cia's code of conduct or something <laughs> well hey to take to take this a step further i know you guys have both done this as well but i mean one thing that at least alicia and i really look forward to are if you can get away for a night or two together, like a date weekend, man, that does, that's like an extra bonus deposit, right? But a yes. big one in your marriage's account. And so think about that. I mean, what could you do soon after listening to this to say, I am going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a, a, a night away together. It could be locally. It could just be, Hey, go, go book a nice room at a local hotel and you know, go out to a nice restaurant, get a massage, have flowers there for her. But I mean, we have had some awesome experiences like that. Just getting away for 48 hours together, that does some amazing things. So maybe that's something you could think about in the year, the year to come. That's good. Yeah. Awesome idea. And, um, you know, you might, this might all sound a little bit overwhelming for you. If you're listening, maybe it's been a little bit since you've been on a date with your wife. Stop beating yourself up and just decide what you're going to do from here on out. What are you going to commit to? And also realize that if you will go on a date next week, it doesn't mean everything's going to be repaired. Let's go back to that farming scenario. This develops over time. You put these investments in and your relationship grows a little bit, grows a little bit, grows a little bit. And you look a decade or two decades down the road and something incredible has grown. So commit to this as a 
just a lifestyle. It's not a quick fix. It's not something to repair your marriage. This is a choice that you can make so you have the marriage that you want to have long term. Yeah, Michael, and what you're saying, that's like, I remember a specific time in my life where I just decided I am going to turn around and do things differently, like completely do a 180. And that's when I just started consistently going on dates with Ruthie. And I mean, it's been kind of like ebb and flow where we have seasons where we go out all the time. There was a time where we went out every week and that was just not really sustainable. And we're trying to get back into that a little bit more. But I think it's a mindset shift that I want to be the family guy who invests in marriage. And that one-on-one dating thing is so important that I'm going to make it happen because it won't happen by itself. And it's really kind of poor leadership men if we are all sort of relying on our wives to sort of like elbow us or give us a Charlie horse and say like, let's go out and go to that concert or do something. We should be the one to initiate it. And um, I mean, not to be super touchy feely here, but that's why I love talking with you guys because I see it's like that iron sharpens iron analogy. Like I see you guys doing that and I'm just like, well, I'm like them. So I'm going to do it as well. And I think that's why it's important. The kind of people that you hang around with also, which could be another episode, but it's like, look for friends who, who have that kind of relationship with their spouse. And I, I, another thing is we talked about going on double dates with our wives in the future when we're doing things together with entrepreneurial family men. It's like that's where magic happens as well, just being around other people on that dating thing. That's what we did before we were married, right? Yeah, you bet. Don't be that guy that hides out in the garage because you don't know how to talk to your wife. Yeah. So do you guys agree <laughs> with me? Call the action so. on this one is – Make a commitment. What else we got here, Chris? Yeah. No, that's what I was going to say, man. We've talked about how important this is, the why. This is your best relationship in your life. The most meaningful, the longest standing. So make the investment that you need. And, uh, you know, we touched on the how, right? We talked about some of the practical. Talk about babysitters, getting the things scheduled. Uh, Come up with a list. Come up with a list sometime. Just take it five minutes. Jot down the best ideas you have in your area about restaurants and activities and take a look at the schedule of activities in your area. You know, there might be some fun concerts or whatever, but make a list and be intentional about those timing. And, and remember how important this is from a perspective of your kids, the legacy that you're showing and what you're leading, right? I mean, that's, it's important. And then, yeah, Jamie, I would say, I mean, this very clear call to action. This very clear resource we're giving you is, guys, as you're thinking about this, schedule something right now. Maybe you need to, after the end of this episode, shoot a text to a babysitter or your wife and say, hey, plan a babysitter this Saturday night. You and me, we're going out. You know, polish up those shoes, get ready, but do it. Take action. Your wife needs it. Your marriage depends on it. Your future is all about this most important relationship. Thank you for listening to the Entrepreneurial Family Man podcast. For show notes, resources, and to connect with us, visit www.entrepreneurialfamilyman.com. 